Welcome to Randy's Photography Workshops. Today we are going to explore several of the different aspects of portrait photography. Let's get started with tip number one, single or group portraits. Most people think that portrait photography is a photo of just one individual. But actually, good portrait photography can include pictures of a single person or groups of people. Here you see a group portrait of an International Ladies' Day bike event, which truly captures the unique moment. So what are the various aspects of good photography that you want to incorporate into your portrait work. Let's take a look at tip number two. Define the style. We tend to think of portrait photography as a very serious kind of photography. You'll frequently be asked to get a portrait for your business card or for a resume. Those are usually serious kinds of images. Think about creating a serious but casual portrait photo. You may even have a serious situation that has an element of fun and that can still be a good portrait photo. I encourage people to lean towards an artistic portrait style to me, I believe these are more powerful and break away from a standard portrait image. But you can experiment, try out the different styles, and see what you come up with. Tip number three, location and backgrounds. Two important elements that make up any good portrait photo. Everyone cannot be expected to have a professional photography studio, but that doesn't stop you from taking good portrait photos. You can take a portrait photo on the spot using any particular situation or occurrence and still turn it into a good image. You often see portrait photos taken against a solid colored background black or white background, sometimes staged areas that were expensive to create, but there's nothing that stops you from being creative in improvising. In the photo above, I used the ship that was in the background, had everybody stand in front of that, and that created the background that I wanted. Tip number four, lighting considerations. Expensive flash units or studio lights are wonderful tools to have, but for the average person, the basic flash on your camera and natural light are two of your powerful lighting tools. Next time you take portrait photos, challenge yourself not to use your flash. Just use natural light. That may be the light from ceiling fixtures. It may be light filtering in through a window. It may be bright sunlight. See how good you can do your portrait photos just using natural light. This natural light portrait of Arizona's remarkable sculptor and artist, Bruce Law, complements the work that he did with natural materials. Challenge yourself to create a portrait of someone you know using natural light to help define your subject. We are halfway there. Here's tip number five, camera settings. Whether you have a smartphone or a point and shoot or professional camera, chances are there are settings in your menu that are specific for portrait photos. In the example shown here, the menu under picture style allows you to select portrait mode. This automatically sets your camera for portrait photos. 
what this means is your camera will crop the image to meet what it thinks should be a standard portrait image, and it will adjust to the lighting conditions as well. Another menu item you'll probably have on your camera is red eye reduction. This is very useful in eliminating that nasty glare that you get from flash firing into somebody's eyes. Let's move along into tip number six, posing versus candids. Taking the time to pose your subjects can dramatically improve your pictures. Most of the time, you just grab your camera, snap off some quick candid shots, and you hope for the best. Next time you start taking your pictures, think about posing your subjects. That will help in creating new and artistic images. Those candid moments will always be invaluable, but try to mix it up a little bit and do some posing. Part of my goal today is just to inspire you. When I was just 10 years old, the very famous photographer Diane Arbus snapped this picture of me and my dance partner, Mary Ellen Cleary. It was so inspirational that I picked up a camera that year and literally started taking pictures at the age of 10. So I hope I can inspire you today. Okay, tip number seven, color and black and white. Everybody has a different opinion about color versus black and white photos. This portrait is just naturally vibrant because of the colored ribbons. I believe that most of you would agree black and white just doesn't work for this particular image. An easy solution is to shoot in color and then make duplicates of those same images in black and white. Compare the two and pick the one you really like. If your goal might be to exhibit your artwork, just remember that the art world tends to lean towards black and white as being the only artistic style of photography. I do not agree. As I've shown, I believe color and black and white both have appropriate applications. Let's move into tip number eight, makeup, hair, nails. My advice here is pretty straightforward. If you want better looking portrait photos, make sure that your subject has applied extra makeup, taken care of their hair, and applied a fresh coat of nail polish. This applies to men as well. A small amount of makeup could dramatically improve their photos. If your selected poses are going to incorporate the hands, then carefully manicured nails with good polish, either colored or clear, will make a striking difference to your finished pictures. A great trick to ending up with fantastic portrait photos is to encourage your family and friends to go out and see their hairstylist, go to a makeup artist, go to the manicurist. They'll enjoy that time, they'll spend a little extra money, and you'll end up with fabulous pictures. This brings us to tip number nine, photo editing pros and cons. Today you can find so many photo editing software programs available both for the amateur and the professional. The subject in this portrait was placed too close to a hanging plant and you'll see there's a distracting shadow to the right. You can easily learn how to remove these distractions and end up with a much more appealing portrait. Your average portrait photo subject will almost never have that perfect skin complexion that we've been conditioned to see in magazines and TV commercials. While I prefer a more natural look in the photos I shoot, 
you may want to experiment with some of the skin softening software programs that are available. Here is the final tip number 10. The subject is everything. Remind yourself every time you do portrait photos that your subject truly is the star of the show. What can you offer as a photographer to make that subject feel special, to capture something unique in the moment? Maybe it's a different location, a special background, a tricky lighting effect. Experiment. Have fun. You have the opportunity to create a singular moment in time that can last forever. Here are five new ideas to help you with your portrait photography. Number one, have a friend or family member pose in different positions and try full body shots, waist up, and head shots just for variety. Number two, photograph one person with a formal background and a casual background to see how creative you can be with both styles. Number three, use a flashlight, a lamp, or sunlight coming in a window to see how many different effects you can create. Number four, shoot a before and after portrait using a wig or makeup with your subject. Number five, photograph candids of someone cooking, exercising, or talking. Thank you for participating in my photography workshop. My name is Randy Anagnostis, and I hope you'll join me again in the future.